my favorite view of Antalya. So the beach that continues for about 10 kilometers with the mountains which have so many beautiful areas and places you can visit. For all the parks that continue all the way like that, you've got sea life aquarium there. So this is where the cliffs of Antalya start and basically it's like Murat Pasha starts from here and goes all the way across until uh, about another 10 kilometers, maybe 15 kilometers, and then it goes back down towards the sandy beach Lara. So this is the stony beach and the Lara beach is sandy on that side. Probably the best viewed park in Antalya, Turkey. That's a quirky, beautiful little tiny park in the old town of Antalya. This area is Sarisu right at the edge of Antalya and you can see the mountains and then you've got new buildings all surrounding it. This is for those people who want a quiet place but they want, they want new buildings that are more affordable. So this is Sarisu in Antalya, the orange trees there. pocket that continues all the way up to the city. So see this is where the the museum is on the right side we're going towards the, the beautiful viewpoint and you have the big uh, hospitals here public hospital so as I said Antalya is not just a holiday resort but it's an actual city here you have the mall and here you have the tramway that goes right at the back of Antalya for those people who can't afford the central homes can also live near the tramway at the back where you can get newer buildings so much cheaper as you can see the ice cap mountain there so we are literally about two kilometers away from the sea 
which is about that way. Well, probably one and a half kilometers, you could say. And you have all the banks and big shops here. But again, you've got big shops in uh, the Barbara Street, which is um, that side as well, near the sea as well. But this is the main kind of like center point for all the shopping. Because obviously the Mark Antalya Mall is here. But they've got several malls at the back as well of Antalya, depending upon uh, different uh, different areas have different central points. So this is Murad Pasha central point. Uh, and obviously this is where you have the big shops here. Obviously, Konyalti Beach, that area has its own center point. And um, then Lara has its own uh, mall as well. Um, that's very famous. And obviously, the Capes has its own malls as well. So they all have the different areas and different advantages and disadvantages. It's very difficult to say which one is the best area according to your needs and your budget. And this is a secret place not a lot of people know about in the city, right in the middle of the city, under a park. There's no sign saying it's there. See, it's underneath a bridge, which nobody knows about. And you've got a waterfall. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about this place. And then you go to the Yavuz Park, which is quite famous. You've got beautiful cliffs breaking down, overlooking the old town. See, that's the cliffs. That's the old town. That's the boats there. And there's a beautiful park here as well. But mostly just old men sitting down looking at the view. And then we the fountains are open in the summer. There's Isla Antalya. Beautiful park with flowers, statues. Beautiful view of the sea in all directions. That's Kulluk Street, a very famous street for shopping in Antalya. Cliffs now start going downwards, and they have a beautiful park with children play areas. And I said that park continues all the way. You can see the park continuing downwards, and then that sandy beach there. So between here, there's about like six kilometers of beach that is completely no hotels at all. Yeah, and behind it is all just greenery. And then after that, you have all the big five-star hotels. After that, yeah, the strip starts where most people think. It's a holiday city, and the airport is uh, about 10 kilometers from here, not, not far, very close. So, as I said, um, many buses come here. This is where basically the hotels kind of stop in Lara. And then for approximately all of this land here, for about five, six kilometers, it's just greenery. And this is where the locals come to have a barbecue. And all of these stands, there's about probably a hundred of them that continue all the way up to there. <laughs> Hundreds of barbecue stands for locals to come and do barbecues. You'll see mostly Turkish families here. Five, six kilometers that way is where the big, amazing, again, I say amazing because they're all different shapes and sizes and some of them uh, of the hotels are like made like boats, Titanic. Some of them made as palaces, Kremlin Palace. You've got like the Disneyland of uh, theme parks. that side so again the beach continues this is all public beach yeah even in front of those hotels if you've got the stamina to 
and your six kilometers is not enough of a jog for you and you need to go all the way to the to the hotels then obviously even there you can go into their beach there's no private beaches the government has made it forbidden for them for the hotels to take off any beach it's just too much choice man you got so much choice of of places to go to and natural beauty history and i haven't mentioned as well to you but if you go there's many many towns in it so if you go that way you got sea day you got alania And as we, we came from Khmer, that's the mountain region there. And you got Kash, Kalkan. There's so many historical places in all of these areas. That's why they call it the cradle of civilization, Antalya. Most ancient cities are pretty touristic and you don't get to live there, but here this is a city, bro. Rock sand beach. idea in 2022 now that the you know inflation apparently has happened in turkey this is what you get for six pounds about eight dollars so you've got spinach there about a kg of spinach you've got carrots peppers mushrooms all of these bananas you've got avocados which are probably the most expensive thing here you've got the peppers broccoli cauliflower all of these small tomatoes these are a bit more expensive than the regular ones and you've got like four and a half kg of oranges you've got one kg of apples and you've got strawberries all of that is our weekly shopping of six pounds up to eight dollars of nice fresh farm organic food in turkey and in antalya thinking about it this is in antalya the most touristic city imagine what it must be in the regular cities which are probably much much cheaper
like the mountain has disappeared in the snow. Literally, like it's just it's just like vanished. bike ride, take a bus that way and you see the epic mountain views from there and uh, as you can see people come here just to watch the uh, the waves, the waves get really uh, crazy here especially in the winter and it's really a sight to watch and obviously the park continues for 10 kilometer row of palm trees and parks and cafes and play areas for children all the way up to the city where the cliffs start and once the cliffs start that's where the city starts my favorite area. The reason Antalya is the 
most beautiful city, in my opinion, in the world, is because it's a city, not just the west waters, not just the sea, not just the mountains, not just the beaches or the sandy, Lara or the rocky Pondanti. Not only that half of the city is also made on a cliff, so dramaticness increases, and the weather is the most southern part of Turkey, so the weather is really good even during the winter, as it is right now in January. and the parks that run across the entire city. There's beautiful mosques, children play areas all across for another five, six kilometers till it reaches the Dudun waterfall. One of the few waterfalls that go into the sea. And then after that, the cliffs go downwards into the sandy beaches of Lara. For tens of kilometers of sandy beach and being a city it has many many beautiful areas to enjoy activities hotels um, all the regular things that any city has with uh, bowling clubs swimming places gyms and uh, mountain climbing other activities to do with the mountains other activities to do with the beach uh, they have many theme parks some are inside the city some only 20 kilometers away like Land of Legends, which is the biggest theme park in probably all of Turkey. And um, they have all the hospitals, all the schools, private, public, um, international, local, everything you want, you will find in Antalya. And being such a tourism capital, it's also an extremely safe country in general, but Antalya is extra, extra safe. And another thing, it's very important for people to know before they move to a country is financially can they afford it and that's another thing that is very surprising of a place like this so as you walk along the different parts of the cliff you can see different views from the center you have the boats the harbor which is very beautiful and the old town surrounded around that area behind these buildings many ancient ruins surround Antalya city as well some within the city and some very small So property prices range from, let's say, a two, three bedroom house, well, apartment, varies from 30,000 pounds all the way up to 200, 300,000 pounds, depending upon whether it's a new building like this, or whether it's an old building like this, whether it's sea view, which this one is, which these ones are, or whether it's behind. So it all depends on location. So because there's an infrastructure already in place for foreigners, um, you don't really need to learn the language either. So it's very friendly for all countries to come and visit. It's a very cosmopolitan city, unlike other rural cities that you will find. And when it comes to food and expenses, um, the electric, water, gas bill are a small fraction of what I would pay in England or in many Western countries. You would say approximately 30% of what you would pay, maybe even less in some cases. And when it comes to food items, just to give you an example, McDonald's, Burger King, KFC are literally half the price in Antalya as they would be compared to how much they charge in Western countries. But obviously if you eat the local food, it's even more cheaper. And if you cook the food, then you will save extremely in big percentages. So fruit and veg is mostly grown in the south of Turkey because of the weather, the climate, the ground. But um, so because it's such a less um, transport away, distance away, it's even more cheaper. So it's literally to the point of no cost at all. Fruit and veg for a whole family of two adults and two children on average will cost about um, eight dollars or six pounds, I could say, a week. So it's extremely negligible. And we're talking about fresh fruit and veg, possibly even organic. And then not to mention the pollution levels because you're near the sea, it's so good. You're surrounded by greenery and mountains. It's even more beautiful. But then you also got the beauty and the necessities of a city right at your doorstep, which makes life so much easier, especially with a family, when it comes to hospitals, when it comes to schools, when it comes to work, opportunities. The opportunities are endless. And being a cosmopolitan city, the people are also welcoming to foreigners. And as I said, the infrastructure, the systems are in place for foreigners to come 
and to get a residency permit, to go to the local council, everything is easier and you will find people who speak your language, especially English, Russian, Spanish, most of the major languages, you won't find an issue. And as you already know, Turkey being in the center, center of the world really, you get opportunity to travel any part of the world at a short uh, time. So you just go to Istanbul airport, from there all the flights go to every place you want. But Antalya airport is also a big major destination, so they have flights regularly going to many parts of the world directly. For example, London, you can go to London within four and a half hours and there's flights going nearly every single day, if not every single day. And the prices are very cheap. From the winter, you could catch a flight all the way to London for I myself have paid £20 one way, which is ridiculous, about $30, which is less than a train ride in London. Here's a view of Antalya, which you would normally never find. You have to get it from an angle, and normally people don't come to this part. Look at that mountain range. Just look at how wide that mountain range is. Then you have the sea, and from that distance you've got Konyalti start there, all the way. And if you look very closely, you can see the ice cap mountains, the cliffs. See, that's all the cliffs of Antalya. Then the cliffs become slowly, if you look closely, they go down into Lara Beach. And then that goes all the way towards Side, another ancient city. Um, very old, lots of um, amphitheater around these areas. There's one there, there's one ancient one there in the Sea Day. There's one up in the mountain. You have to climb it for that one. Then when you get to Alanya, that's a separate beauty. You've got an amazing mountain range and you've got a mountain right in the middle of the two beaches, Cleopatra Sandy Beach. And if you go more towards the left side as I am coming here, there's the mountain area. So as I said, the mountain areas, you have Kemer. You get very mountain here, as you can see. A very dramatic mountain range. And behind it, you've got Saklikent. You've got Goinuk uh, Canyon. Um, people go driving up to the mountains. There's all sorts of campsites, there's all sorts of views um, and if you go more towards the left you've got the Kemer and then the Kamyuva beach. So these beaches just continue all the way across all the way back towards uh, you know you've got some campsites in the woods, uh, ancient ruins in, of Olympus, then you've got the uh, some more ruins in uh, near Finike and then after that you've got Kash, you've got Kalkan which are very famous spaces, you've got the biggest beach, sandy beach uh, of Turkey, um, Patara, again you've got another amphitheater there, you've got more ancient ruins there. So as I said the, this whole region has got so much activities, jeep safaris, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of activities you could possibly name, they have it. And then you've obviously, because of the ice cap mountains, Saklikent, uh, which is about, I think, one hour drive or, or something like this. You go up from Antal, from Konyalti, it's about one hour drive, it takes you up towards Saklikent, which is a, a skiing resort, and that's open at the moment. So all sorts of availability you have, not to mention all the five-star resorts that you have available, especially during the winter. This is right now January, the coldest month. As you can see, the sun is shining, it's beautiful, and can get really really good deals you know starting from 20 pound a night for a whole family all inclusive so, and then it goes down to 30 pound 30 pound is about a, you know a reasonable five star you can get with breakfast lunch and dinner for your whole family two adults two children uh, with uh, sauna steam room gym you know uh, the whole shazam really so this is another advantage of being in Antalya which I forgot to mention uh, in the beginning but it's just the amount of sheer places you can visit from here you've got Dalian uh, where you have the, the heated pools you've got the mud baths there so everything is within like uh, a three hour drive. Do you understand? This is the amazing thing about living in Antalya is that you're in a location where you have unlimited beauty of every single sort. You tell me anything that we've missed out. You know what I mean? Every single thing is within Antalya city, within range of Antalya city. And as I said, it's a south, south point of Turkey. So the weather is just amazing. The sun is shining. As I said, it's January. You can barely see any of the leaves moving. One thing I hated when I was living in England is that the wind tries to kill you. The sickness comes from the wind, you know, the cold wind. So look, there's no wind. There's no wind at all, you know. So when the sun shines, it's just amazing, amazing feeling, as I said. I just can't get enough of the mountain range, you know. As I said, this mountain range which I'm in now, this is only 20 minutes drive from Konyalti. 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes drive, and you're in the mountain ranges. Or you could live at the edge of the city of Konyalti, and the mountains, as you can see, they start from there anyway, and you can literally be living underneath the mountains with amazing uh, apartments that have been built there in an area called Sarisu. Uh, if you wanted to be more up in the mountains on the back side there, which you can see more mountains, then there's uh, Doshal Malti there. So you can be even more closer to those mountain ranges if you wanted. So the possibilities of Antalya are unlimited. And this is why it's such a growing city. Started uh, 10 years back 
you know, 15, 20, 15 years ago, this was only like a hundred, under 100,000, the population. Now it's gone berserk, you know, it's gone to like 2 million. And it's still growing rapidly. And that's just the amount of people that actually live here. Forget the amount that are coming every single year on holiday. The Turks, the people from all countries, surrounding countries and around the world that come to this famous place. It must be something. And this is why I call it, as I said, the most beautiful city in the world. So if anyone is interested in uh, buying property here, um, if anyone wants some advice, uh, if anyone needs some help, if you, any, if you have any questions, you can email me, which will be in the description below, or you can read, leave a comment, and hopefully I'll reply, but the email is obviously the best option. Uh, and on top of that, uh, just to add to the people who are actually Muslims, if you're not Muslim, then you can turn off the video now, but if you are a Muslim, then let me give you some added bonuses of being in Antalya. So one of the main advantages obviously being a Muslim country is that you don't have to worry about halal food everything is halal even uh, brands like McDonald's and Burger King have halal certificates so you don't have to worry about halal haram you can eat anywhere any place and obviously another big advantage is mosques are every everywhere literally you can just um, uh, walk a short distance and you'll find a mosque within walking distance every 10 minutes and if you live near the center like me near the old town then you'd have a mosque 10 mosques we have in a 10 minutes walking distance that is no exaggeration at all because we live near the old town there are many ancient mosques so that's a very beautiful thing about living near the center another major advantage uh, being a muslim is obviously there are many halal hotels as well so you'll have segregated swimming pools segregated sauna steam rooms and gyms for ladies and men so that's another potential uh, uh, advantage of being uh, in a muslim country and they cater for that which is very nice uh, me personally, to be honest, I come in the winter periods and you, it doesn't make any difference. I come to uh, many of the five-star resorts and I check before coming and I get the halal, I, I, the food is halal anyway, but on top of that I check that it's not so busy and then I just book it. So no, normally it's never been an issue. They also in Antalya have a ladies beach, which is another advantage for the Muslims. That only ladies and children are allowed in that beach. It's in the end of Konyalti, uh, as I showed you right at the end of the mountains. Um, and there happens to be a sandy beach, that part, even though the rest of the Konyalti is actually a rocky beach. So that is another advantage. Again, I've never been there because I mean, I've been there once uh, without my wife. I actually was just going past, but I don't, I've never been there with my wife because we've never needed it, you know, because we find the regular beach is fine. You just wear your, um, uh, she can wear her Islamic, uh, uh, you know, uh, swimming cl clothing and it's fine. You know, it's, it's not an issue. Uh, there's not, you can always find a quiet area, quiet spot, whether it's the 100 kilometers on the Lara side, or as I said, the, you know, the beach just continues all the way from Konyalti and it continues all the way across basically all the way up to Patara, all the way up to Fatia. You have unlimited number of beaches you can choose from. Any, any month, any time, any day, there's always going to be an empty beach. So don't worry about that. Um, that's an amazing thing. And to be honest, most of the time I'm in Konyalti Beach because it's, it doesn't get, if you go there in the right time in the mornings or you go the right time in the evenings, you won't have that many people. So that's another advantage. Another thing is the government is quite pro-Islam. So they have a lot of Islamic schools. Uh, even in the public schools, they do teach um, Islamic studies as well. And there's also uh, dedicated Islamic schools, which they call Imam Hatib School, which is the public government schools. Uh, they have two options where you can go in the daytime or you could send your child to stay there as well as a boarding, uh, boarding school as well. And this is free, which is amazing, uh, which is very rare as well. So the government is quite pro-Islam. So you have another amazing advantage is the adhan you'll hear the adhan aloud every single place you go to you'll hear the adhan even if you go to a remote place like this in the middle of uh, just five-star resorts even here you'll hear the adhan which is amazing and it echoes through the mountains here so it's quite beautiful